All right. Good morning, and thank you for joining today's webinar entitled Examining the Components of Your Peptide Sample with AccuPEP QC. My name is Laura, and I'm the Marketing Specialist for Peptide Services here at GenScript. And today I am pleased to introduce our presenter, Dr. Yu Lu, who is our senior scientist with years of peptide synthesis experience. Um, there are many research applications in which we, requ we require custom peptides. However, there is often uncertainty regarding what makes up our peptide sample. And the more we know about what is in our samples, the greater the chances for experimental success. And in this webinar, we hope to provide you with the resources you need to get the most out of your custom peptides. If you have any questions during the presentation, you can submit them by typing them in the questions field that you see on your screen, and we'll do our best to answer them after the webinar. Frequently asked questions with their answers, as well as the webinar itself, will be posted on our website at www.genscript.com. And finally, at the end of the presentation, you'll receive a brief survey. We encourage you to fill out this survey, as it will help us better design and optimize our services to meet your needs in the future. And with that, I would like to turn this over uh, to Dr. Liu to uh, give her presentation. GeneScript's peptide department has 10 years' experience in peptide production, and approximately 10,000 high-quality items have been successfully delivered every year. The custom peptides synthesized at GeneScript have been used in many research fields, such as antibody generation, tissue engineering, drug discovery, structural biology, vaccine development, and drug discovery. Custom peptides play an important role in research, but knowing how to properly use them can be a problem. A common problem dealing with peptide is, is poor solubility. Sometimes peptides never seem to go into solution. Or in an even worse case, improper dissolving way may completely ruin peptide samples. Also, sometimes an unknown contamination can lead to you an unexpected result completely ruining your assay. Low experimental reproducibility from batch to batch and non reproducible results for connectivity experiments are also common issues. So, how can this issue be addressed? I'd like to start to answer this question by a real case. When doing my PhD, I once purchased the same peptide from two different companies for a kinetic study. But finally, the experiment failed because of unexpected reaction rate. I had no idea at that time, so I spent plenty of time trying to solve this problem. Until I started to work in GeneScript, I realized that I barely understood the composition in delivered peptide samples. There are other components in peptide samples apart from peptides. And the variations in peptides delivered from different companies will ultimately give you different results. Therefore, for certain types of assay, additional testing is required to learn more about your peptide sample, including appropriate solvents, removal of TFA, the precise amount of net peptide, the presence of an endoxic, endotoxin, the water percentage, the pH value, the residue solvent, the identification of peptide impurities, and so on. Here at GeneScript, we provide a portfolio of resources called AcuPEP QC that is aimed to comprehensively examine the components of your peptide sample. By knowing all the possible components in your peptide samples, you can reduce experimental troubleshooting to increase experiment reliability and to ensure reproducible results. There are three main features of the AcuPEP QC service, quantification tests, toxicity tests, and other tests such as solubility and pH tests. 
So each category, more specific analysis are involved. And I will go into this in more depth measure. At the bottom of the slide, uh, there's a link to the website of this service where you can find detailed information. As I mentioned, the AccuPIP service provides three options to comprehensively exam peptide sample. Each test option is inspired by one question you may often ask yourself when working with custom peptides. I will start, start by talking about quantification test. Do I really know all the possible components in my peptide sample? If we ask ourselves, I'm afraid even for those researchers who are working with custom for many years, the answer will be no. So what is the delivered custom peptide really made of? Generally, besides your target peptide sequence, there are peptide impurities, counter ions, and water in a delivered peptides. These components are commonly found in all custom peptides, regardless of where you purchase your peptide from. Target peptides and peptide impurities make up the net peptide content, that is, the total amount of all peptide species, including target peptide sequence, as well as peptides with altered sequences or functional groups generated during peptide synthesis, such as amino acid deletions, truncations, remaining protective groups, modification of disulfide bridges, and perhaps even peptide sequence with two or more adjacent amino acids in the wrong order. The ratio of target peptides among all peptide species is termed as purity, which is determined by high-performance liquid chromatography, abbreviated as HPLC. HPLC purity test is a mandatory quality control for each purified custom peptide. In this slide, I'd like to introduce how peptide purity is measured. The figure here is a chromatogram obtained by HPLC, where target peptide and peptide impurities have been separately represented by the peaks. The highest peak represents the target peptide, and the smaller chromatographic peaks represent peptide impurities, such as those I mentioned previously. The table below the chromatogram is a list of the retention times, heights, and integrate areas for all chromatography peaks observed in this separation. Based on chromatography in principles, that peak area is proportional to its concentration. Then, the ratio of peak area of target peptide in relation to all detected peptide peak areas is defined as peptide purity. So in this case, peptide purity is 97.2%. That is mean 97.2% 97 of all peptide species use your target peptide. So we know purity is defined as a ratio between the target peptide and other peak areas. The next question is, how can we measure all these peptide species? Or in other words, measure the net peptide content? The AccuPEP QC service provides two test options here. The first method is amino acid analysis, abbreviated as AAA, which is not only able to determine the pre precise amount of net peptide, but also is able to determine the amino acid composition. The chart in the bottom of the slide gives you a general protocol of how AAA is conducted. Custom peptides are first hydrolyzed by concentrated hydrochloride acid into single amino acids. After pre-colon derivation, single amino acids are coupled with a special chemical motif that makes the derivatives be returned in reverse phase HPLC and absorb UV light. 
The final mixture of derived amino acids can be further separated by reverse phase HPLC. Using the integrated area with standard amino acid samples, the concentration of single amino acids is calculated, and therefore the absolute amount of each type of amino acid or the composition of amino acids in capsin peptide is determined. Here is a simple ex example of an AAA report for the peptide with a sequence as ZFNTRA. As shown in the table, six amino acid residues concentration have been measured. The number of amino acids is then calculated and compare with the theoretical amino acid number. I should mention here, not all types of amino acids can survive during acid hydrolysis. For example, asparagine and glutamine are completely deaminated and respectively turned into aspartic acid and glutamic acid, respectively. So the AAA report can only give the total amount of asparagine and aspartic acid or glutamine and glutamine acid, but cannot measure the amount for each for them. Also, a small portion of serine and the serine can be destroyed during acid hydrolysis, leading to a decreased amount of these two amino acids. Therefore, only the highlighted amino acids in the table that are stable enough during acid hydrolysis and also highly recovered from HPLC are all utilized for net peptide constant calculation. Another way to determine the net peptide content is peptide content analysis by using nitrogen element analysis. The principle here is very easy. Neither the non-peptide contamination, such as counter ions, nor a sub the water contain ni nitrogen elements, but peptides do. According to the chemical formula, the amount of nitrogen element then can be used to analyze the amount of custom peptide. Here is an example to show how to calculate the precise amount of your tucked peptide in delivered custom peptide. We have synthesized a custom peptide with a delivered weight or growth weight of 10 mg, 97% purity and a 40% peptide content as determined by AAA. How can we calculate the exact amount of target peptide? First, we can get the net peptide weight by using net peptide content. Then, using the purity, we get the exact amount of target peptide in this delivered product. Now we move on and talk about other contaminations that can be in your peptide sample, which include county ions such, such as trifluoroacetate, acetate, and hydrochloride. Counter ions are the result of the protonation of all basic groups during peptide production. The most common form is trifluoroacetate, a sort for a sort form of trifluoroacetic acid, abbreviated as TFA. It comes from peptide cleavage and purification step. TFA is widely used during peptide synthesis for the cleavage or protection group and the reason. And also, it composes the mobile phase for preparative high-performance liquid chromatography. Without special request, all custom peptides are delivered in trifluoroacetate form. In this figure, all basic groups such as N-terminus, side-chain lysine, arginine, and histine all bind one sort. 
The free acid form of TFA always exists in light of light custom peptide at a very low level. Because this volatile acid cannot completely be removed in the light of lysation step. I have to mention here that if custom peptide sequence with a number of positive charged residues like lysine, arginine, and histidine to bind TFA, TFA can even comprise 45% of lyophilized custom peptide products. Due to the bi-toxicity of TFA, acid formate and hydrochloride are alternative choices for counter ions that mainly come from additional ion exchange states before lyophilization. Considering that TFA salt is the most common counter ion and the major portion of non peptide contamination, its quantification analysis is useful for cellular acids, active uh, pharmaceutical ingredients, and uh, manufactured products. Ion chromatography is the main method to identify and quantify different types of counter ions. The figure here is an illustration of an ion chromatogram. Three different types of counter ions are well separated by ion exchange column, showing as three main peaks. The peak area are used for the quantification by comparing them to standard ion solutions. As mentioned in the pre previous slide, the TFA content can com com comprises as much as 50% uh, of the peptide content. That will be a bad news for bioassay, since high TFA levels are toxic to cells. I will give detailed information in toxicity test part. So how can I estimate the theoretical TFA content in custom peptides? Take an example for for instance, a peptide with a molecular weight as 1,500 Dalton. We know TFA molecular as 114 Dalton. Since this peptide has four TFA binding sites, the peptide TFA adult molecular weight is 1,956 Dalton. Therefore, the estimated TFA content is the amount ratio between TFA salt and the peptide TFA adult, that is 23.3%. Surprisingly, water is, an, is one portion of the custom peptide, more or less after lyophilization, before the peptide sample is delivered. In fact, water cannot be completely removed from lyophilized peptide. And the more hydrophilic the sequence is, the more water custom peptides retain. For peptides with very hydrophilic sequences, their liquescence will happen. That is, plenty of water in the air has been absorbed into lyophilized peptides. That can be a problem. The cell bias of custom peptide weight causes a mistake in further concentration calculation. And too much accumulated water can even cause cleavage, leading to custom peptide degradation. So moisture content analysis is useful for hydrophilic peptides, as they will retain the most quarter. The Kyle Fisher chromatic titration method is widely accepted for moisture content analysis. The method is based on chemical reaction between water and iodine. Iodine reacts quantitatively with water, while iodine is generated directly in the electrolyte by electrochemical means. The circuit current between detector electrodes maintains constant so that the amount of charge that is for iodine generation can be calculated. At the end point of the titration, an abrupt voltage drops during excess iodine present in the electrolyte, marking for the end. Thus, 
based on the rigorously conductivity relationship between the electric charge and the amount of electrochemically generated iodine, the amount of water eventually can be quantified. Here is a summary of the quantification tests offered with AQPEP service. Custom paper types are composed of three main components. The major component is the net peptide that contains target peptide and peptide impurities. The net peptide content is usually from 50% to 80%. Besides peptide species, there are two types of non-peptide components, cotton ions and water. Cotton ions usually comprise 10% to 30% of the custom peptide content. Water content usually is less than 10% for most of custom peptides, but it could be particularly, particularly high for hydrophilic peptides. Keep in mind that apart from peptide species, there are non-peptide components in custom peptide, sometimes even at a quite high level, which may play in the like, an expected role in your experiment. In a toxicity test, I'm going to give a detailed explanation. So I'm moving to toxicity text part. What could make my experiment fail? It is a question that we may ask ourselves for many times. Here we explore two main components in custom peptide sample that may be toxic for your bioassay. In the toxicity test, we examine two potentially toxic components, TFA and endotoxin. We provide you two test options here, TFA removal and analysis, and endotoxin analysis. TFA is a common counter anion in custom peptides, but it has been reported that trace amount of TFA can cause cytotoxicity in cell culture assays. Endotoxins are usually introduced into peptide during any process of peptide production, since clean room is not available in any production process. It is a common sense that small concentration of endotoxin can increase cell viability or cause immune response in cellular acids. TFA is the most common counter ion in custom peptides that can be toxic in cell culture acid. To avoid any potential risk of TFA in your experiments, TFA removal is an excellent choice for you, which exchange toxic TFA form into non-toxic form, such as acetate, formate, or hydrochloride form, either by reverse phase HPLC or by anion exchange resin before lyophilization. Since we provide more than one type of non-toxic counter ion form, how can we decide which one to choose? Acetate or formate is a sort of weak acid, while hydrochloride is a sort of strong acid. The difference between them, in my opinion, mainly comes from the issue during ion exchange step, but it's less for using them in different experiments. The choice of, of exchange type of non-toxic counter ion plays a key role in peptide production. A proper type of non-toxic counter ion can significantly reduce the risk of failure in ion exchange. Therefore, we suggest for peptide sequence with unstable amino acids, such as cysteine, methionine, and N-terminal glutamine, acetate, or formate is the best choices. For custom peptides with low Solubility, hydrochloride is the best. Imagine that TFA counter ion has been completely exchanged into acetate or hydrochloride for one custom peptide. 
depending on whether the acetate or hydrochloride forms are chosen, there can be two main effects. Solubility and the pH value at which the peptide dissolves. Hydrochloride custom peptide may have better solubility in water than acetate form, but its dissolved solution may have a lower pH value than acetate form. We provide two types of TFA removal service, standard TFA removal service and a guaranteed TFA removal service. A standard TFA removal service mainly uses reverse phase HPLC or any exchange resin to exchange TFA form to non-toxic counter ion form. Though most of TFA has been removed in this case, residue TFA content in counter ion exchange custom peptides undetermined. Due to the differences in peptide sequence and other unrevealed parameters, TFA content of custom peptide for this service is usually for from quarter of the estimate TFA to 1%. Guaranteed TFA removal service mainly use any exchange resin or reverse phase HPLC to exchange TFA form to non-toxic counter ion form. But this service is unique in that we guarantee the TFA content is lower than 1%, which is first determined by ion chromatography. In the toxins, also known as lipopolysaccharides, are the major components of the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria. And due to the absence of the clean room for main production process, endotoxins are introduced into custom peptides during peptide production. We use chromogenic uh, touch blue amoebocyte lysate or limulus amoebocyte lysate determined to test the final level of endotoxin in delivered custom peptide. GeneScript provides endotoxin assay kits called toxin sensor. The peptide samples are mixed with the assay regions, and the amount of purple, purple color in solution will reflect levels of endotoxin in the sample. So we have been talked about the negative influence of TFA and the endotoxin. In this slide, we list some common experiments that might be suitable for you to choose toxicity test. For example, some signals of the infrared and the circular dichroism sexual toxicity are easily influenced by TFA ions, and we suggest to request TFA removal from your peptide samples if either of these techniques are being used. For cell culture assays, TFA removal and analysis service is suggested, and uh, more detailed information could be found in next slide. For cosmetics and uh, pharmaceutical applications, TFA removal and analysis service is also suggested. For cell culture assay, sensitive to endotoxin or prone to immune responses, in your toxin analysis service is suggested. As an example, here is a case study from a publication that uh, investigates the effect of TFA on cytotoxicity in culture. They found that high level of TFA inhibits proliferation of osteoblasts and uh, chondrocytes. The figure here shows the influence of TFA concentration in cell culture on cell number. The data suggests that TFA concentrations that exceed the nanomolar range decrease cell growth in osteoblast and uh, chondrocyte culture. In short, TFA and uh, endotoxin are two main factors that might cause toxicity in your experiment. 
if you are still struggling with unexpected results when working with custom PIP type, we suggest you reevaluate the influence of TFA and uh, the endotoxin in your experiment. In the following part, I'm going to talk about other tests. What else can I do to accelerate your experiment? The first useful test we provide for you is a suitability test. Hydrophobic peptides are always the most annoying peptide to handle. In the bottom of this slide, amino acids with different polarity are listed and uh, hydrophobic amino acids have, have been highlighted in yellow. Theoretically, peptide sequences containing more than 50% hydrophobic amino acids and uh, with longer peptide lengths than 5 amino acids can be regarded as hydrophobic peptides, and they always have a problem in dissolution. It will take you plenty of time to find a proper solvent to will dissolve this peptide. So, how can GeneScript help you with this hydrophobic peptide? We can provide you a solubility report for you requested custom peptides, where you can find at least three dissolution results in three different solvents. Here is an example. This hydrophobic custom peptide tends to be well dissolved in dimethyl sulfoxide, abbreviated as DMSO solvent, and has small solubility in PBS buffer with pH value around 7.1, but completely undissolved in water. You can benefit a lot from our solubility test, such as to reduce troubleshooting and to save time and peptide products. It's particularly useful for peptide libraries so that you can choose the same solvent to dissolve all peptide actants in peptide library, avoiding varied results coming from different dissolved solvents. Another test that might help you is pH testing. Why for the same custom peptide could there be different pH value or peptide solution in the presence of different counter ions? For custom peptides containing TFA, the lower pH is the result of free TFA acid. Also, the TFA is a much stronger acid than acetic acid. And thus, the pH value of custom peptide with TFA salt is lower than that with acetate salt, according to the Lewis theory of acid and alkali. So if your experiment is very sensitive to the pH value of final peptide solution, we suggest you to choose this test that provides you the final pH value of calcium peptide solution just to dissolve in water. In summary, GeneScript's AcuPEP QC service provides a comprehensive examination of your custom peptides. It contains three main tests to quantify each component in custom peptide, amino acid analysis, peptide content analysis, counter ion quantification analysis, and moisture con content analysis can be chosen. To remove toxins in custom peptide, TFA removal and analysis and uh, introduction analysis can choosing for better control of your experiment. To make your sample preparation easier, solubility test and a pH test can be your choice. And now I will turn the presentation back over to Laura, who will take more, talk more about how you can request these services. All right, thank you so much, Lauren, for your presentation. All right, so all right, so now that you know I'm sorry. Okay. So now that you know about these tests, how can you request them? 
So if you go to our website and you want to place a quote for um, your custom peptides, um, just uh, click on the quote button and input your, the sequence, uh, purity, and quantity information as you usually would. Uh, so GenScript can provide free solubility tests that Lauren just talked about to ensure that you find the best solvent for your peptide sample. And you re can request the service by checking the box that you see on your screen. You can also select either the guaranteed or standard TFE removal options, depending on whether you want, how assured you want to be that there's less than 1% TFA remaining in your peptide sample. And finally, if there are other services that we have mentioned here that you would like to include in your order, you can also indicate that in the comments section. And I also have here on the bottom of the screen um, the website you can, um, you can go to if you want to learn more or read up again on some of the services we mentioned today. So I also want to take a moment to uh, talk about some of the other peptide services that we provide that you might also find useful. So in addition to our standard peptides, we offer peptide library service, services ideal for protein-related studies. Um, we also offer peptoid synthesis services for um, the synthesis of proteolytic peptide mimetics. Um, we offer quick peptide synthesis as well as cosmetic peptide synthesis for those who are interested in commercial grade peptides. So, and for more information about all of these services, please visit our website listed here. And so before we start taking any questions, first we want to thank you again for attending today. Um, we hope that this was a useful presentation for you. Um, we also wanted to tell you a little bit more about the um, upcoming uh, webinars that we have in case you are interested. Um, so again, these are all free. You can join them by going to the website that I have listed here. On November 5th, we'll be hosting a webinar on large-scale genome editing for metabolic engineering of E. coli that describes our, metabolic, our microbial gene editing service. Um, on the 11th, we'll be presenting a webinar called um, Optimizing Soluble Protein Expression for Codon Optimization, RBS Design and Express Expression Vector Design. And then finally, on the 18th, we'll present a webinar on antibody drug de development challenges and solutions. So please feel free to register for any of these webinars um, and others that I might not have mentioned by visiting the website listed here. Okay, so with that, I would like to, we will open the um, presentation up for questions. So um, as I mentioned previously, if you have a question, um, please write, type it into the this control panel that you see on your screen, and we will do our best to answer them. Okay, so it looks like we have a few questions here. Um, so, um, so the first question that we have is, does DMSO interfere with ELISA assays? Um, I think uh, the influence of DMSO uh, on uh, ELISA assay, it depends on the concentration of DMSO. It's just uh, like a very, very low concentration of DMSO. I don't think it will influence uh, a lot. Because in our, in one another department, they also using our peptides for the ELISA assay. They usually to uh, dissolve peptides in GMSO solution, but before they use them, they usually dilute them in like uh, um, 100 times or 1,000 times. In this case, it will be it will not be a problem. All right, great, thanks, Lauren. Um, Okay, so another question we have is, when should I choose the acetate or hydrochloride form of TFA? 
Um, whether you select to exchange TFA for acetate or hydrochloride form uh, will be dependent on your specific experiment. Cell culture assay or infrared or uh, circular dichroism spectroscopy involved projects will be suggested to remove TFA. As for other projects, the best way is to ask for help, I think, from our production team before you place an order. All right, great, thanks. And all right, so we'll do one more question. Um, so what kind of buffers are being used for the solubility tests? Um, basically, basically uh, there are three kinds of buffers using our solubility test. Water, PPS, with pH value around 7.1, and dimethyl sulfoxide, uh, abbreviated as DMSO. Uh, usually, peptides can be dissolved at least in one of these three buffers. In a very real case, that none of these buffers can dissolve your peptides, we will choose all possible solvents to make it dissolved. All right, great. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any more questions today. Um, so again, thank you so much for, con for um, attending the webinar. Um, we will be posting it shortly on our website, so if you want to look at it again, please feel free. We'll have links provided. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to visit our Frequently Asked Question website that I have listed here as well. Or you can um, email either of us if you think of any other questions. So thank you again. Um, have a great rest of your day. Until next time.